Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Hacker News type Rails application using Rails 5. You can see here that Hacker News is a forum that's uh, run by Y Combinator. It's got a lot of information on tech companies, interesting news, a lot of stuff to do with Silicon Valley. Um, there's a lot of good conversation that goes on over here. The design is really simple. You have uh, users that can create submissions. These submissions are usually links to articles. Um, inside of these submissions, you can comment. Um, so for our application, you can see what we will be building. It's very similar to Hacker News, same design, um, similar navbar. You can log in. And when you log in, you can also sign up. So we'll create a user, just a test account. Set a password. And once you're signed up, you can submit links. So we'll name this demo link. And we'll just make this go to google.com. Let's uh, So we'll select create submission and our user account has created the demo link. When you go back to the home page, you can see the link displayed. We have the ability to upvote it. Each account can only upvote it once. And we can also comment on our posts. So we can say, this was my post. You can see it has the username, the time it was posted, and we have the ability to edit our post as well. Cool, so let's get started on building this application. The first thing you want to do is to create a new Rails application. So you can open up your terminal. I'm going to create my application on my desktop, so I'll cd into my desktop, and I'll create Rails New Hacker News. Uh, you can name it anything you want. I'm calling it Hacker News. Once that's created, you can CD into the application, so Hacker News. And now we'll launch it in Atom. If nothing opened up for you when you typed in Atom space period, that just means you need to set up your sim link between your terminal and Atom. All right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is run Rails server to confirm that our application was created successfully. So now we can go to localhost 3000. We should see yay Rails, so perfect. Everything was working. We can type uh, control C to close the Rails server. And now uh, we can use git to initialize our application. So git init, git status, git add, Git commit first commit. Cool. Within our application, we're going to want a few features. Some of these are to create users and have these users sign in and sign out. We also want the ability for these users to submit links. We also want to be able to upvote links and comment on submissions. So the first thing we're going to do is create submissions. Let's start working on a new branch. To do this, we'll type git checkout b, and we'll name the branch add submissions. To create submissions, we're going to create a scaffold. So we'll run rails g scaffold submission title string. And we're also going to have a URL that is a string. You can press enter. Now Rails went ahead and created a ton of files. Really simplified the process for us. We can run Rails DB migrate to run the migration that was created. So if you go to DB migrate and click the first file, you can see it's creating the submissions table that has a column that's a title and it's a string also has a column that's a URL and is also a string so we run rails db migrate to run the migration and add the table to our schema 
Now we can start our server and take a look at what was just created. So if we go to localhost 3000 slash submissions, we should be able to create a new submission. Test submission. Awesome. So we can stop our server and save our progress again get status, get add, get commit, dash am, generated submissions, get checkout master. So now we merge the branch we were working on with git merge and type the name of the branch, add submissions. Cool. Next we're going to create our users. So let's clear this. Create a new branch with git checkout b create users. We're going to work with a gem called devise. So we can open up our gem file and let's add devise in here, but first let's take a minute to clean this up. When we push our application to Heroku, we're going to want to use a different database on production. So let's move SQLite 3 from this area into development. And then we're going to create group production do and gem pg. This will ensure when we push our application to Heroku, it'll use the Postgres database and not SQLite 3. If you keep SQLite 3 outside of the development group, then when you try and push to Heroku, you will encounter an error. It's also good practice to add your Ruby version to the top of the gem file. So you can check your Ruby version by typing ruby-v. I'm on Ruby 2.3.0. So at the top, you can just type ruby 2.3.0. Save that. And finally, we can add the device gem. And we want versions 4.2 or higher. Now we can run bundle install. And to install device, you can type rails generate device install. You can see it gives you a couple instructions on how to set up device. The first thing we're going to want to do is open up our development file. So you can go to the bottom of this file, add this line, config action mailer, default URL options, host localhost. Next we need to set up the root of our application. To do this we can type root submissions index. So this is saying to for the root of our application, look in the submission folder and the index file. So the index.html.erb file. And that can be found under app, views, submissions, index.html.erb. So I'll actually want to add an S here. So you save this. The next step is to update our application.html.erb file. That's under app views layouts. Inside of here, you can add the flash messages. So just paste this right in here and click save. Finally, the last step is to run rails, oops, generate device views. So this generates all the views for when you sign in, sign up, edit your account, forget your password, device automatically creates all of these views for us. Next we want to create the user model within device. To do this we type rails generate device user and we run rails db migrate. So if you start the rails server again 
you can see all the work that we just did. Now we'll be able to create new users. To check this out, you can go to localhost 3000 slash users slash sign up. And let's create our first user. Our first user email will just be first at gmail.com, password, password, and sign up. And you can see that we have signed in. So it's working pretty well. We can check this out further inside of the Rails console. So if you stop the server, type Rails C, and you type user.all, we should have one user in here. Cool, with the user ID of one, and the email is first at gmail.com. Perfect, so we know that the user model is working correctly. You can exit the console by pressing Control and D at the same time. So let's push this to Git by Git status and see what our changes are. And Git add to add the changes. Git commit dash am add users with device. Another thing we'll want to do to make the app a bit more user friendly is add some navigation at the top. So once you log in, there will be a link to add submissions, to edit your account, or to log out. To do this, we'll go to the application.html erb, and you can add a little bit of code beneath the flash messages. I'll also include all of this code in files at the bottom of this video so that you can make sure you can read it. Press save. Cool. So if you go back into the start the Rails server, and if you refresh the page, you can see we have some links here. So we can go to submit, and it takes us to the new submission page. You can go to your account, and you can edit your account, and you can sign out. And you can see we've signed out successfully. A problem here is right now we're signed out, but we still have the ability to destroy a submission. So we can delete somebody else's post. To change this, we'll need to add associations between submissions and users. So if you go into your application, let's close these files. We'll want to go to app, models, user.rb, and inside of here, we'll add has many submissions. So one user can create many submissions, and inside of submissions, you can add belongs to user and save that. We'll also want to add a user ID to the submissions table. This will allow us to link the user that creates the submission to that exact submission. So only that user will be able to delete their submissions. Next, we're going to add the user ID column to the submissions table. To do this, we'll create a migration file. So we can close the Rails server. And to create the migration file, you can type Rails generate migration, add user ID to submission submissions, and then user ID column will be an integer. And we'll also add an index on this. So you can check out the migration file under db migrate. And you can see we're going to the submissions table. We're adding a column called user ID. And that column is of the data type integer. So now we can run Rails db migrate. And we can go to our schema and check out the submissions table 
and see that it now has a user ID column and that column is the data type integer. So we can push this to git with git status. You can see our changes here. Git add, git commit, dash am. And then we added association between submissions and users. So let's try signing in. Oops. So let's start the Rails server and sign in to our account. Let's create a new submission. And it looks like we get an error. So we're getting this error because inside of the submissions controller, we need to update the new method and the create method. So for the new method, we want it to be submission equals current user dot submissions dot build. And for the create method, we want the submission to be current user dot submissions dot build submission params and save that. So let's go back to our Rails server and type Rails S. And let's try to submit this again. Awesome. So if you go into the Rails console now, we can take a look at what we just did. So we can type submission.last. And notice that the submission now has a user ID associated to it. So with this user ID, we'll be able to add authentication so that only users that created a submission can delete that submission. We can close the console with control D and we can add the authentication now. So if you open up the submissions controller, at the very top, we're going to add a before filter that authenticates user. authenticate user except on the index page and the show page. So if you save this, in our application, we only want the show edit and destroy links to show if the current user is the user that created the submission. To do this, we'll go to the index.html page. So that's under views, submissions, index.html.erb and above the links we'll add some Ruby code so it says if submission.user is equal to the current user then we want to show these links otherwise we don't want to show them so we'll end that here save Inside of here, we'll also remove this extra information under the table and save that. And you go back into the application and refresh. Let's sign out of the account. And you can see that the links have disappeared, so it's working well. The core of our application is looking very good. The next thing we need to do is add the styling. We can go back to our terminal and save everything. Now we can push our changes to git. So git status, git add, git commit, authorization for submissions. OK. 
git checkout master git merge create users cool so our application is slowly starting to come together we're going to use a gem called bootstrap sass so let's open up our terminal and close our rails server so to add the styling we'll begin working on a new branch so we'll type git checkout dash b and we'll name the branch add styling next thing we want to do is add a gem so we can actually close all these files get a clean workspace and we'll open up the gem file we're going to add a gem called bootstrap sass you can save this and open up your terminal to run bundle install so now that we've installed the gem we need to do a few things in our application to make sure bootstrap files can be read the first thing we're going to do is open up the app assets style sheets application.css and we want to save this as scss inside of this file we want to add import bootstrap sprockets we actually want this inside of uh, double quotes save this and we also want to add import bootstrap so once you have that you can save the file and you can open up app assets javascripts application.js and under jQuery you can add require bootstrap sprockets while we're in here we can also delete this scaffolds.scss file this file might override the bootstrap CSS so we can just take it out to avoid that the next step is to add styling to our application so we can really get the look of Hacker News can see we have a navigation at the top with a nice orange background the brand logo on the left side in a dark black and you can see the layout of the index page you have the title of the submission and then underneath that you have the number of upvotes the user that uploaded the file how long ago the number of comments and a link to the submission if you click the link it goes straight to the URL of the submission. If you click the comments link, it opens up the submission page where you have the opportunity to comment or to upvote as well as view the link again. So we'll make these changes in our application here. We'll start with the application HTML file, so views, layouts, application.html.erb. And inside of here we're going to make some changes. So to start, let's just take out the links we added in before. And above the flash message, we'll start by creating a div that has the ID of main and the class container. I'm using an add-on called Emmet. So if you want to use that with uh, Atom, I highly recommend it. You can also use it with Sublime Text. Emmet uh, has a lot of shortcuts. so you can really cut time with your coding. So inside of this div we're going to create a header that is of the class navbar navbar default and I'm gonna hit tab inside of here the role will be navigation so I can open this up and I'll create a div with the ID of logo a class of navbar brand. So inside of here is going to be the Hacker News logo. Open up this Rails form and create a link to, let's say, Hacker 
news comma root path so when you click on the logo it's going to direct you to the root path which is the home page so we can save this underneath this div let's create a nav that is of the class collapse navbar collapse navbar ex1 collapse hit tab and now we can add some of that logic we had earlier so if the user is signed in close this with the end if the user is signed in we want to have a link that displays submit and account so the submit will allow them to create a new submission and the account will allow them to edit their account for the submission we'll open up a rails tag and say link to submit new submission path so if you're wondering where I got new submission path from you can open up your terminal and type rake routes this will give you a list of all the paths we have in our application we have new submission and then you just add path after if you want to edit submissions if you want to open that page you would type edit submission path So next to the submit button, we want to create the account button. And for the account, we want to open up the edit user path. So for this, we'll use the edit user registration path. And we can click save. So I actually forgot to create a unordered list with the class of nav, navbar, nav, navbar, left, because we want these links to be on the left side of the navbar. So we can create an else tag. And above this, we'll create another unordered list. This will be of the class nav, nav bar, nav. And this will be nav bar right. So on the right, you can see we want it to display a login button. And if the user is signed in, we want it to display logout. So create this in li, open this up. Open up a Ruby tag, link to log out. Since we're saying if the user is signed in, then we want to show submit account and log out. We want the log out path to be destroy user session path. We can close off that Ruby tag. So if the user is not signed in, we want to display the login link on the right side. So we'll create another unordered list and it'll be nav, navbar, nav, navbar, right. Inside of here, we'll have li, link to login, new user session path and close this off and click save next we're going to create a container around the yield so that the entire page will be wrapped around a container so we want this to be a div with the ID of container in a class of center block. You can highlight the yield, press and hold control and command and press the up arrow. 
and press save. So that should be good for the application.html page. Next we're going to edit the application.css. I've gone ahead and created the style sheet ahead of time. I'll create a link to the style sheet at the bottom of this video. So I'll paste this in. You can see for the main container, I have the background with light gray, no padding to override some of the settings that were existing. I've also edited the color of the links, the color of the links that are under a post, the color of the link for the post title, so I want that to be black and the font size to be a little bit larger. For the nav bar, I eliminated the radius, so there's no roundness on the nav bar like there is by default. I changed the height to 30 pixels to make it more similar to the Hacker News height. And I've made similar changes for the rest of the nav bar. If this is your first time working with CSS, I recommend just playing around with some of these settings and looking at how it affects the application. And I'll open up the submissions index page and I'll just highlight everything and paste in this new code. I've made some changes to the index page that makes it much more similar to the Hacker News layout. You have the submission link at the top and on the left you'll have a carrot that is a link to the upvote so we'll add that in a little bit later also you'll have the URL next to the title and at the bottom you'll have the number of upvotes the user's email that submitted the submission how long ago the submission was submitted and the link to the submission page by clicking on the comments so a lot of this might be confusing to you. I recommend you just follow along and add on this code. And the more web applications you create, the more you'll learn just by trial and error and repetition. So you can go ahead and save this file. And the last thing we'll do is we'll open up the show html.erb. And I'll highlight everything and paste in some new code. So you can pause the video here and copy in the code, or you can check out the GitHub repo that I have linked um, for this course, and you can just make sure that your code matches up. If you encounter any errors, you can leave a comment at the bottom of the video, and I'll check out your GitHub repo and see if I can spot any errors. So we can save this now, and we can go to our terminal. You can type git status, see all of our changes, git add, git commit, added styling, git checkout master, git merge, add styling. Sweet. Next up we're going to add upvotes into our application. Let's work on a new branch, so git checkout b, add upvotes. We're going to be using a gem called acts as votable. So if you open up the gem file, again we can close a lot of these files, and we can paste the gem right below bootstrap sass. You can save this, open up your terminal, and run bundle install. And now to install uh, access votable, you can type rails generate x as votable migration, and then rails db migrate. Next up, we're going to go to the submission model, and let's add it at the top. We'll add x as votable. To test this out, we can go into the Rails console and let's set at submission equal to submission dot first at user equal to user dot first and we're going to 
have the user like a submission, but we're going to do this all through the um, through the Rails console. So next we'll type at submission dot liked by at user. So it says true, which is nice, and at submission dot votes for dot size. We have one vote for the submission at submission dot save true. So if you close this with control C or control D, clear. Next, we'll open up our routes file. We're going to make some changes to our submissions resources. We're going to create a block. So we'll write do. So for members, do put like submissions dot pound upvote and then for dislikes we want it to be submission downvote you can save this and open up the submissions controller so now we want to create those methods that we referenced in the routes file we're going to create a method called upvote Inside of here, we're going to set submission equal to submission dot find params ID. Now we're going to assign the upvote to the current user. To do this, we'll type submission dot upvote by current user. And then we'll redirect to the previous page. So back. For downvote, it'll be something similar. So I'm highlighting everything. I'm holding down Command and Shift and pressing D. I'll change upvote to downvote. Submission equals submission dot find params ID will stay the same. And now we'll change the upvote to downvote. For this particular application, we won't be using downvotes, but if you want to create an application like Reddit, you'll want to create this downvote method, so I'll just show you it here. So once you're done with that, you can save the document and go back into the terminal, get status, get add, get commit, am, added, upvotes get checkout master and get merge add upvotes the next step is to add comments into our application to create the comments we're going to create a scaffold so rails generate scaffold comment we're going to have a column that's a submission ID. This will be an integer. And we want to index that column. We're also going to have a body column. That will be the data type text. And we want to reference the users. References. But we will skip. Can't type. Style sheets. All right, so the scaffold was generated and we can run rails db migrate to add this to our schema. So if you take a look at our schema again, we have a table called comments with a column that's submission ID, body, user ID, all of the data types that we just created. So for the comments, we need to create some associations. A submission will have many comments. So under submission.rb, let's add has many 
comments save this and a comment belongs to a submission so belongs to submission and save that under our routes.rb file under this member block we can add resources comments and save this we can remove the resources comments from the top as well so once you save that routes.rb file next we will go into the comments controller and we're going to make some changes to a couple methods so for the comments we won't be using the index the show the new or the edit so we can get rid of these we also won't be using the update method so we can get rid of that going to make some changes here so the first change the first thing we're going to add is submission equals submission dot find params submission ID comment equals at submission dot comments dot new comment params and then comment equals current user oops comment dot user equals current user we can get rid of this JSON Oops. We can save this. Next, we're going to add a gem file called simple form. This will be for the comment box. So we can add this to the gem file. Click save. Bundle install. Can run rails generate simple form install this will set up the simple form gem if you take a look at our submissions show page you can see that it's rendering a partial inside of here so we can create that partial now under comments we can create a new file under app views comments underscore comments dot html dot erb Click save. To use this div4, we'll need to add a gem to our gem file again. The gem is called record tag helper. So you, once you add that, you can click save. Run bundle install. And we're good to go. So let's click get status, get add, get commit added comments check out master and let's merge that branch so git merge add comments so it's been a while we can go ahead and launch the rails server let's see what our application is looking like if you go to localhost 3000 so it's been a while we can go ahead and launch the rails server Let's see what our application is looking like. If you go to localhost 3000, it's looking pretty good. Something is a bit off here. It looks like our index page needs some changes. So if we go to submissions, index, let's take a look. So in our index page, we're using something called Font Awesome to create the carrot up. To use Font Awesome, we need to update our application.html and under the header, we're going to add the line. So this is a online host of the Font Awesome. You can also install this directly into your application. For this, it'll be perfectly fine to use the CDN host. So you can save this. If you don't want to obviously type out this long information, I'll include it 
in the GitHub file, but you can also type font awesome CDN and click this first link, I believe. And if you hit the down arrow, you just select this whole section and you copy that into the application. So let's save this and take a look at how things are. Okay. If you go to application.html.erb, it looks like a mistake I made is that this closing div is too early. This should be further down, right above the body. So once you save this and refresh the page, it looks much better. So in our application, we want to make sure our submissions are ordered by upvote. We want the most upvoted submission to be displayed at the top. To do this, we can stop the Rails server and open up our terminal, go to submissions controller, and for the index, we're going to change this to order. Cached votes total descending and save this. In order to use this cached votes total, we'll need to create a new migration. And the act as votes gem has a migration on their website that we can use but we still need to set up the migration file. So Rails generate migration, add cached votes to submissions, and press enter. And then we can go to db migrate, open up the migration file. And if you go to act as votable, Go to the GitHub page, you scroll all the way down, you can see this is what we're going to be using. For Rails 5, you want to take out the self and just use define up, and our model is not going to be the posts, ours is called submission. So and I can just paste this in here. So save this. I'll go back into the terminal and type Rails DB migrate and it was created so let's launch the rails server and take a look at the application so we're getting this error because if you open up the routes.rb file, I typed submission rather than submission, so I'm missing the O. So if you just save this, type, um, press refresh. So I'm getting this error because I'm missing an S on submissions. So if we add an S here, we save this and we refresh the page. Now you can see the upvote was given to the submission. Let me log out again. Now when I go to sign out, we get this error because under application.html.erb, under the logout, after the destroy user session path, need to add method delete. Now if I refresh, or if I go back, and now when I press log out, so now if I log back in and I sign up with a new account, me upvote this and you can see that the new submission went to the top so it's working well let's try adding a comment
All right, so we get an error. Undefined method comment URL. Did I mean comment params? This error is due because of the fact that my partial is plural when it should be singular. So let's rename this file to comment.html.erb. If we go to the comments controller, this comment here should be submission. So once I save this and refresh the page, so undefined method comment path, that is because resources comments needs to be included in the routes.rb file. And awesome, you see our comment here now. So the next and the final thing we need to do is push our application to Heroku. Before we do that, let's play around and make sure everything is working as it should be. So if we click log out, go back to the home page, and now we log in again. Let's create another new user, Ryan at gmail.com. Let's upload this again. And let's make sure we can't edit this comment. Cool. Add this. Two comments. All right, cool. Let's go to our account. Everything is looking good. Let's push this application to Heroku. To do this, you'll want to go to heroku.com. You can create an account or you can sign into your existing account. Select new, create app. We'll name our application live course hacker news and click select app. If you scroll down, you can see the instructions to launch your Heroku app. So if you haven't logged in already, you can type Heroku login. So since we have an existing Git repository, we're going to follow these instructions here. So I'm just going to highlight the text that's included. I'm going to paste this here, press enter. So before we push our application to Heroku, we're going to want to update the production.rb file that we were playing around with earlier. So if you go to config environments production.rb. So for our application, we don't actually need the mailer since we're not using the mailer with the Vis. When you sign up, you have the option to um, send out a confirmation email. We won't be using that so we can delete this line from production.rb and now you can follow these steps. So we're using an existing repository so you can copy this line here, paste it, then run git add git commit am push to Heroku and git push Heroku master.
Awesome, so it deployed successfully. It may take a couple of minutes for your application to run. If you try and launch the application now, you're going to encounter an error. So let's just run through that. Type Heroku open. Your application will launch in your, app, in your uh, web browser. You can see something went wrong because we need to run Heroku, Rake, DB, Migrate so that all the migration files that we have in our application have the opportunity to run on the new database that's on Heroku. So when we press enter here, you can see all the migration files run. And once it's finished, our application will be ready to go. So if we refresh this page, you can see our application. Let's sign up. Let's make a submission. Sweet. Let's try adding a comment. and uploading and things are looking great so awesome job on completing and successfully deploying your rails application now you've built a web app very similar to hacker news and you understand the principles so you can create an application similar to reddit or other forum based websites if you have any feedback i'd love to hear it um, please share this video if you found it helpful let your friends know about open labs and i'll keep more coming